Now I'm going to show you how to make your own terminal connector out of the wire itself. <laughs> this is a really good method. Um, and it works for a lot of applications too. First thing you want to do is choose the right size heat shrink. So I've got various different sizes in this container and I've picked two that are a good size that give me a little bit of work room with the, with the copper cable itself and enough that it will shrink down to size when I'm done. First and foremost, I'm gonna cut enough of this. I wanna give myself a, a generous amount of length for this because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be wrapping the copper around itself. So let's go about here. Let's see how, let's see if this is enough. I may need a little bit more, but let's see if this does the trick. I've got my screw from the actual amplifier itself. So this is gonna be a good point of reference. Now if I grab another screwdriver, and I basically look, they've got exactly the same thickness here, right? So I can use this as a tool to make the perfect loop or uh, plug size that will actually work on this particular screw. So the screw is a great reference, but you don't need to actually use the screw itself. I'm gonna split the cable in two different sides like this, okay? Before I do this, one thing I forgot, keep the wire closed. I'm actually gonna take my heat shrink that I've pre-cut, and I'm just gonna run it down and just keep it down here because we're gonna make a loop where it's gonna be tricky to get this on if we don't already pre-plan and have it ready to go. Okay, give myself a little bit more leverage right there. I'm just going to give them a slight twist. As clean as possible. Nice clean twist. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my screwdriver, which is the same thickness as this exact screw that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to use my screwdriver wrap the cable around itself, like so. And now the other side. Okay. Now with two fingers pushing up on the cable that I've wrapped, I'm just gonna kinda go with my fingers like this, and I'm just gonna shape and form the copper as best as I can, you know? Sometimes you can have it running alongside like this, or you can have them one side wrapping over. It's up to you. I like to do it this way. Okay. Now when I pull this out, I've, I've retained the perfect shape. See? Now this screw will perfectly fit in that hole. Full transparency, I ended up re-terminating the connectors because I felt like I didn't have enough of this extra to go. So I ended up redoing it. Just make sure you do the right length. It'll take a little bit of practice the first time you do it, but after that, you'll get the hang of it. Place my screwdriver in here, okay? While holding, push the heat shrink right up to the edge of the connector like that, okay? When I pull it out, we got the perfect connection there. Now we can go just a little bit out so that it's more of a, of a stock fit. And we do the same thing on the other side. Screwdriver back in, push, and then just try your best. If you've wrapped the, the copper correctly, you shouldn't get any of those copper hairs sticking out. Push like that, and then pull it out. Now we check both sides to make sure there's no stragglers. <laughs> and now I'm just gonna take my heat gun to it, and just make sure that the heat shrink is exactly where I want it to be, so that this will make full contact when the screw goes in.
Perfect. So now we've got a beautiful heat shrink wrapped around. I gotta let this cool for a little bit. But I mean, look at that. How perfect is that? Perfect. 